Um, last week I ran a consultation with primary schools from across Cork South West on the Draft County Development Plan. Of the 35 schools participating, two-thirds identified the need for safe crossings near their school and nine out of ten wanted cycle paths. When young people live close enough, they want to walk and cycle to school, to go in with their friends and have a sense of independence. This also brings many health and environmental benefits. However, to make this possible, we need proper infrastructure that can ensure the safety of children. This is severely lacking in so many places across West Cork and rural Ireland. Belgooley needs investment to safely connect the school and village in Ballyheda and Dundara National School um, are just two examples of the many that need traffic calming measures. While this is a matter for so many communities, my question today relates to Kalekill near Bantry. Because getting to school there involves crossing the main street in the village, which is also the primary route between Bera, Bantry and Sheep's Head to Cork City. Um, there are so many lorries coming through from Castletown Bear, um, and last week community members showed me and my colleague Councillor Ross O'Connell where the children have to cross. There are literally no traffic calming measures, no footpaths, no pedestrian crossings, and not even any legible road markings. There's absolutely nothing. Furthermore, as with many towns and villages, traffic goes through dangerously fast, particularly in Kalekill, which increases the risk for the 190 pupils in school there. This is simply incredibly dangerous. While all schools need and should have proper infrastructure, Kalekill is an outlier. It requires immediate intervention to have safe crossings and footpaths in place for September. We will be pursuing this matter at council level, but given the immediacy of the need, could the minister please ensure a safe route to school is provided for the children of Kalekill? It is a small but vibrant community that is retaining its population and ensuring economic viability. Local groups have done incredible work in developing facilities in parkland, and they have highlighted the very pressing need for a safe crossing to the school as a priority. Minister, you'll no doubt outline the Safe Routes to School initiative, which specifically funds footpath upgrades and new cycle lanes to encourage more active travel to school. I can assure you that Kalekill is in desperate need of this type of investment and will greatly benefit from this programme. Last year, Belgooley Primary School, which also needs support in safely connecting the village and school, showed me the significance of simple interventions such as bollards can make to empower children to walk and cycle to school. While in Skibreen there's a successful cycle bus which can act as an example for other towns. We all want this type of activity and infrastructure for as many primary and secondary schools as possible. In talking with primary school classes, over one third felt that although they were close enough to walk or cycle to school, they did not because it was not safe. Minister, we need to work to bring that number down. Kalekill is one school where you can make a substantial difference. Like I said, I know there are lots of areas that need these kinds of works, but Kalekill really is in a league of its own in terms of the risk to people's safety. I urge you to act to help, put proper infrastructure in place and have it ready for students in September. Thank you. Minister Emrin Ryan. Thank you much, very much, Deputy Kearns. Um, as it happens, I know, I know Kalekill, and I know the, I used to bring a lot of people up to the stone circles up in Kalekill, you know them, stunning, and the school is just below that, between that, the village and that, and, and uh, Swano as well. And I also know it, there is, that route to Cork is with the way everyone goes. It's kind of a rat run almost, as it were, and it doesn't go through any town effectively, so it's a straight run pretty much all the way. So, Actually, it's similar to Balgooley, which I happen to know as well, just from friends. Uh, similar kind of small village off the main roads, as it were, but still with a lot of passing traffic because it is off the main road. You can kind of, it's back, run, back roads, but they're very busy. So I'm absolutely aware of, of the, the sort of issue we'd have in, in a place like Kalekill. Can I say... Um, First, I think primarily it's a matter for the councils. And actually, one thing you'd say about Cork County Council in their planning is that they've done well compared to other parts of the country, it seems to me. If you look at the likes of Skibbereen, Bantry, Clannacilty, Dunmanway, McCroom now with the bypass, um, Cork County Council has got the idea about urban realm and creating villages that have centres and towns that have pedestrian spaces and so on. So Cork County Council is better than most, it seems to me. They, I think they've had a good county architect as much something as simple as that has led to a different design approach. 
when it comes, there'll be no shortage of funding for safe routes to schools, and I, I won't list out all the different initiatives that we have, but actually what it comes down to is political will at a local level to rethink what the road is for. And my experience going back, I was just involved in transport campaigning. I was a brilliant engineer, Dutch fella, who kind of taught me a very simple kind of sense of, of, uh, of how do you create these safe spaces. And maybe simplified right down, that first of all, you have to look at what is the function of the road. Let's just think of it as a road system, first of all. And then you look at what is the shape, what is the actual, the way that the road is divided up. And then you look at what's the behavior. And, and if we're going to change it, which we need to do for the likes of Kelkel, we need to could replicate everywhere, 4,000 primary schools, to create safe routes to schools as the mechanism towards achieving a transformation to bringing back walking and cycling as a safe way of getting around our communities. Well, firstly, if you look at that road down in Kelkel, you have to ask the question, is this a, tree, a true road for someone to get? Now, it's not actually, if I could recall the village correctly, the National School is slightly away from the main road, either the one to Gugan or the one, the main road to Cork, but it still, uh, still applies. The, the, the roads through Kelke, let's look at those. What is their function at that point? Is it, are they roads to serve the village or are they roads to serve a, a, a kind of a back road to Cork, as it were? And I think it's the latter. So I think it's, it's the former. It, it is actually, first and foremost, the function of the roads around the village of Kale Kale is, Kale Kale is is for the people of the village. Secondly, then, you look at the shape. And there you might look to see, well, do we need to put in footpaths or do we need to put in, as you say, bollards or other mechanisms? Or do we need to put in ramps? Although you don't want to do that if we can avoid it. We want better ways of, of managing traffic. But the third thing you would look at is behaviour. And for example there, so what's the speeds of people going through? Or, or what type of, is, it big, is those big fish trucks heading to Ross Lair to get to Spain in 24 hours? And, and they're very threatening. So... Not that you know those people are doing their job. They're not. Uh, I'm not blaming them directly. So I think what we need to do is, in a village by village, primary school by primary school, ask what's the function of the road. In my mind, it should be primarily to serve local needs, particularly safe routes to school for our children. Secondly, we look. Do we need to change the shape to assist that? Maybe yes, narrowing you, you, you or maybe building no, out pavements. Um, you, you'll have another opportunity. I come back then. I have to bring in Deputy Kearns. You have two minutes. Uh, thank you for your response and commitment to ensuring uh, many, as many young people as possible have access um, to cycling to school. Um, like I said, you know, we, we will be pursuing with the council, and I agree that it is a council issue. I wouldn't normally bring something like this to this house. It's, it's simply just the urgency of this particular issue in this particular town. I know it's in so many places that we need um, better infrastructure, but like I said, no traffic calming measures. Uh, not even a road marking in the village. So people, you know, like you said, it's seen as a main road, so people are often overtaking, going through the village, and that's going on to where you would go to cross the road where there isn't a pavement. So it's just uh, simply really urgent, and that's why I bring it here. Um, because I hope Kale Kill will be made a priority for the Safe Routes to School initiative. Um, there's an immediate need for safe infrastructure, which can be installed at the most effective time for the community. Um, and it highlights the type of projects we need for all of our schools, from footpaths and cycle lanes to crossing points and traffic calming. Um, regrettably, despite warning signs and current speed restrictions, people still drive much too quickly by schools. Um, so we need to look at additional measures, including more 30 kilometre per hour limits, especially in rural areas, where school are often, schools are often beside um, an 80 or 100 kilometre per hour road. Safe infrastructure for cycling and walking will benefit the whole community. Um, cycling campaigns in Bandon and Skibbereen are calling out for segregated lanes and pedestrian crossings, which are vital for everybody, especially for people with disabilities. Um, the situation for school children in Kale Kill um, is, like you said, exasperated by the volume of traffic going through the village too fast. Um, although it's a regional road, like you said, it is one of the main routes connecting um, West Cork and the city over the Kusong Gap. Um, you spoke about the, the nature and function of the road, the volume of traffic, specifically in relation to trucks coming from Castletown Bear. So there's a clear need, um, which I think you alluded to, for a traffic calming analysis study, I think, um, to guide the types of calming measures that the village requires. Um, it arguably shouldn't be considered a regional road anymore. It's so uh, predominantly used. Um, so given the volume of traffic, I think this really needs to be looked at. Uh, part of placemaking is livable streets, and that applies to villages as much as it does towns and cities. Um, 
So I hope you look at providing this type of project for Kale Kill too. Um, ultimately, as you know, the barometer for safe active travel is would you allow a 10 year old to use it with their friends? Um, in Kale Kill, I can tell you they absolutely would not. I don't think at any age. Um, so this needs to be um, a target and not just for the easy wins in cities, but the, the you, type Deputy. of transformative infrastructure we need in rural areas and the type of infrastructure that Kale Kill needs now. Uh, Minister Ryan, you have two minutes concluding statement. Yeah, I, 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 I don't know how big the school is. I'd be interested to know what's the number, but 190 pupils. 190. The biggest, okay, biggest it's quite. In it's big. So, so the they're area. not just coming from the village. Care 190. Care. They're coming from the wider area. All of the population say is on the the lower part of the town, and then Pearson's you have to drive go up the hill across that main street where all of the lorries pass to get up to the school up the hill. Yeah, and there's I no do, road markings or footpath or I just, anything. I just make this point because I, I have to agree with you about in the village, okay, we need to reduce the speeds and try and, uh, and define it as a village and the roads there are serving the village. So if people are driving through, they realise they're going through an, a, a village area. But there's also the issue of the wider road network in the area because we want to be able, in my mind, we want to be able to make it safe for our children to walk and cycle to school. and, and uh, not, and sometimes that will be a longer distance, might be two or three miles, or, you know, and, and not every case. If people have to drive, they find they, they, they have to drive. Not, there's no one shaming or pointing the finger or saying anyone has to do anything. But if at all possible to make it safe, there is this culture in West Cork, and I suppose I'm, I'm in, in, in interest because I used to, for years, used to bring people cycling around, around those very roads on holidays, but the same applies for, is it safe? Do you feel safe? Most of the time, actually, most of the back roads in West Cork you do, because there's a culture, I think, on local people, that old culture that you'd still say hello to someone as you're driving, you, you raise your finger, and so it's actually, you're not speeding from one place to another. Now, there are other places where that's not the case, and the example of Kelkel is very true because it is this, I'm in a hurry to get the cork. I, I, it's a probably an 80 kilometre and then in cases 100 kilometre speed limits. So by and large people are in that, I'm going to get there as quick as I can within 100, 100k. So therefore, the question we have to ask is, is do we create the safer, wider environment that it is safe to walk on a country road or that it's safe to cycle to school? And, uh, and what's the culture and what's the characteristics of how we drive and how the roads are, are, are treated? We need to get this right because we've Thank such a dense Would you network do a, of roads. Would you do an analysis on the traffic? Would you do a traffic analysis there to see, you know, with the volume and everything? I'd quite happily. If Cork County Council want to take it as an example, I'd very much support that and encourage it and use it as a test case. Because as I said, if you solve it in Kelkil, you could apply the lessons in Bel Bel Belgooli or other places. And uh, that are very similar. I, we, we have to conclude the debate, so. Um, 